Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Maggie Buck, and as you can tell, I'm still learning how to do the technology. So I'm wanting to welcome you to the Foothill Center. I'm the spiritual leader of this community, this absolute faith-based, loving, nurturing community. And the ministers, the practitioners, the board of trustees, we're all committed to your spiritual growth and unfoldment. So we know today is a blessed day, and you are blessed being here with us. So we're going to open with uh, God is my source. They're good as my source? Yeah, God is my source. God is my source. And we've got Diana Blaze. So meet Diana, family. She's part of our new family. Yay. Diana. All right, here we go. All so yours. I'm hoping you'll all join in with me at home. And anyone here is welcome to join in with me as well. So here we go. We're going to get the blood pumping. <laughs> Diana, don't you love her? Oh my gosh, what a great, I know you're all applauding and you're all excited about exactly what we're doing here. I am. And so again, I want to, I wish to welcome you to the Foothills Center for Spiritual Living. And we've got a rousing crowd here. We have uh, Mary, Mary Ann Farmer, yes, on the sound. And we have Mary Ellen Haddock, she's doing and of course Diana and myself so we are so blessed this is and we fill up this room just in case you're wondering okay uh, good to see all of you on on that I'm still gonna learn how to shut all those little comments off and look at them later <laughs> oh God bless us all welcome to the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living in Auburn, California. We are blessed to have you join us. We are blessed to have you with us. And so I'm going to call Mary Ellen Haddock up to ground us in prayer and the vision and uh, the vision statement. Do you have that? Yes, you do. Whatever okay. it is we're doing. You are, yes. Okay. I'm supposed to look at the little yellow thing, so we'll see how this works. Am I good? All right, then. You all here, and you may 
not have this vision and mission statement with you, but you can repeat each line after me. Welcome. We are a community that values and supports each other in our spiritual awakening. We are committed to practical spirituality for everyday living. And I need to give you time to repeat it. All of our activities are grounded in faith, nurtured with love, and guided by spirit. And I know that you all have that emblazoned on your hearts anyway. So, if it's comfortable, just close your eyes. Take a deep breath and let go of everything. There's nowhere else you need to be. There is nothing you need to do. You are totally in the presence of God, because there is only one, one breath, one life, one creative spark that is in, around, and through each and every one of us. And because there is only one, I know that I must be one with that one. And I claim that life, that life that's God's life. Right here, right now, I claim that for myself and I claim that for each and every one of you. We are all beloved children of God in whom he is well pleased. And I know there is only peace and love in God. Therefore, there must be peace and love in me. And anything that looks to the contrary falls away from me because that is not the truth of who I am. And that is certainly not the truth of who you are. Each and every one of us is filled with love and peace. Because love is all there is in the universe. And as we breathe that love in, it fills our hearts. And as we breathe it out, it fills the hearts of each and every one of the people that we touch. Because we know that we are only one because there is only one. And we know that the lives of each of us affect the lives of each and every person. So we bask in that love. We are surrounded by that love. We feel the warmth of that love. And we send that love out to the hearts of everyone in this community to the hearts of everyone, everywhere. Because we know that there is a healing taking place in this world through that love that reaches each and every person. We also know that we are powerful. And with the strength of God and the love and wisdom of God, <coughs> we are all in a better place. And we just give great, great thanks for the opportunity to be together here and to experience that love and that warmth that we know is ours. And I just release my word unto the law that always says yes, knowing that even as I do, these things are something greater are taking place in the life of each and every one of us right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for that beautiful, that beautiful reminder that God is everywhere present. And so this is usually the time that we ask people to come forward with their joys and their support. Because in this community, we believe that we're powerful. And we know that when we ask for support, because we can't always do prayer for ourselves. So we as a community hold each other in prayer when the need is taking place for us. And so then we always say to you, you are so blessed. And we love hearing your joys. We love hearing that you got the job, that the, you found the, place, the new place to live. All is well in your health. 
This is what we do. This is what we know. And we get excited about the answer to prayer for you in your life or your family's life. And so again, we celebrate you by saying you are so blessed. So bring to mind whatever it is that you would like to create in this atmosphere that if you were here with us, you would absolutely be lighting the candle. What is that? What would you bring today to that sacred bowl that we create here? So as I know that for you, I'm saying from all of us at the Foothill Center, you are so blessed. Take a breath and take that in. And so after we do the joys and support, of course, we always go and take all these thoughts, all these ideas into prayer. And also I want to remind you that you can go to our website and you can make your prayer requests on that website and it'll go confidentially to one of our practitioners who will hold you in prayer. Or you can go see prayers on the website. Please, we are here for you. So let's just take all that we know into this moment. And if it's comfortable, just gently close your eyes. And I invite you to take a breath. Ah. And just release Realize that right where you are, God is. That as we claim and accept this truth, this moment, we claim and accept for each and every person hearing this recording. There is that within me, that within you, which knows. Breathe into that sacred and holy place at the very center heart of your being. And allow it to expand throughout your physical body. Let that light of love, that that knows within you, to move throughout your body, touching every cell, every muscle, every fiber, every tissue. Reminding you that right where you are, God is. That there is perfect health in your body. There is perfect right action. There is the spirit of life that is at the very center heart of your being. That part of you that has never been harmed and hurt. And we connect to that divine, magnificent self within. This is where our power is. This is where truth resides within us. This is the place where we are never alone. Ah, thank you, God. Thank you, infinite, invisible spirit of life. And so take this moment and just rest in that knowingness. Rest in the light of truth. And in the next breath, breathe in the power that is flowing through you. You don't have to go get it. There's nothing you need to do. Just be. Feel the power. Feel the breath, the love that God is moving through you, in you and as you. And know with me that it is the presence of your real self, the true essence of your being that we've connected with here this morning. And as you allow that essence to move throughout your body, go beyond the body temple and send this light of love out to your friends and your family, out into your home. Knowing all is well. All is in perfect harmony, no matter what 
is going on. So in this next breath, I invite you to bless all the hearts that are on this Facebook live feed with you. May all the hearts with me be at peace. May all hearts feel reassured, full to overflowing with the love of God. And so now I invite you to send this same love and peace out beyond these walls to the very hearts of the world. May all hearts be at peace. May all hearts be safe healthy, whole. May all hearts, no matter what's going on in their life, know that at the very center heart of each and every one is that power of infinite wisdom, infinite love and clarity. This is what I know. This is what we know together. And so breathe into that knowingness And now I invite you to bring this blessing back into this room. And with the sound of the Tibetan bowl, I invite you to take this blessing deeper still as you bless your own heart. I'm not going to ask you to join me. Oh, you better do the microphone. Microphone helps. I'm not going to ask you to join me in reading the um, sacred reading today because you don't have it. So I am going to read it with you. If you will just take a deep breath, go into that special place, and listen with your heart. I am one with the love of God. I am one in the love of God with all people. My love goes out to everyone, and I know that it is returned from everyone. Overlooking everything that might seem to deny this beneficence, I trust that infinite love will guide and protect me in everything. And I counsel my own soul to show forth this love in such a manner that it shall embrace and warm the heart of humanity, bringing confidence and trust and faith and hope to everyone it touches. Daily, I affirm that love governs all of humanity into pathways of peace and joy. Daily, I affirm that love goes before and makes the way plain and happy. And daily, I affirm that my own love is renewed and rekindled by that great and vast love in which I am immersed, the love which is God. And so it is.
Awesome is right. Mary Ellen just said, awesome. Diana, thank you so much. What a gift from God. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. And I know you are, too, that you'll be here soon. And we'll be filling up this room. And Diana will sing to you in person. I'm looking forward to that. Ah, so here we are. My talk title today is, Spirit is in Every Expression. So we begin by understanding that God works through our faith. And this morning, I'm asking each one of us, what and where is your faith? Take a moment. What have you put your faith into Let's take a moment and check in with ourselves, check in with that that lives within us and ask, what have I put my faith in this past week? The news? The fear? This past week I put my faith in as I overindulged in watching the news and I also overindulged in chocolate, caramel, truffle, mocha, layer. It sounds outrageous, it was. The combination by no means was life-affirming. Matter of fact, chemically, in every sense of the word, too much sugar kind of puts me in a downward spiral that I crash and burn as the plane was coming down. It was a deadly it was deadly to my spirit of life that lives within me. Anyone else trying to soothe yourself from the pain, from the fear of what's going on. See, we all have faith in something. So my question this morning is, where is your faith? I certainly saw where some of mine went last week. Because you see, it's important to be mindful. It's important to take good care of ourselves right now. Right now, everything in life is asking us to be good to ourselves mentally, physically, and emotionally. Because what's going on is, it's not testing us, but, but boy, it's, it's asking us to dig deep within our own being. 
Who am I? What do I believe? Where is God in this? So we need to be mindful what we're feeding ourselves with in body, mind, and spirit. Losing ourselves in the news will, as it did me, made me feel lost and alone, separate from my true essence. My attention was not on one source, God, not at all. Not being able to sleep, I might as well clean something. I don't know about you, but if I can't sleep, it's like, okay, I'm going to get up and move around. I love how Spirit calls each of us to wake up to clean something, to look for what will lift you up. Back into your own divine self. God is always calling us, each one of us. It's whether we listen or not. That's up to us. So I began to clean my bookcase, you know, those precious friends that I have. And so what did I find? Well, one of my most favorite books, I know, those of you who know me, you can always tell if it's my favorite. It's got stickies all over it, little notes, underlined. So, so God had me pick this up. And what I'm going to tell you also is that I'm, I'm going to teach this book in a couple of weeks because it's so powerful. So I, I go, okay, God. It, I'm spinning, I'm twirling. God, talk to me. And I grab one of these books, and here it is. To reverse fear, enter the silence and meditate upon a statement of truth such as, my faith in God delivers me from all fear. Now, if that's not God talking to us, I don't know what is. So I sat there going, okay, God, I hear you. My faith in God delivers me from all fear. Impress these words on your subconscious mind so deep in feeling until a great sense of peace washes over you, comes over you. Then speak to your subconscious mind in such a manner as this. Subconscious mind of me, you are a vibrant living part of me. I won't read it all. This is how we stop in the moment and we call on the power of God and we ask for help. God works through faith. It's a powerful little book. The subconscious is the place within all of us that is within each one of us. And that's the place where the seeds of our beliefs are planted from past experiences, from old beliefs. They are planted and actually let's look at our subconscious as we, as a garden of our beliefs. Of that that has been planted, good, bad, and indifferent. This is where events or people poke these beliefs, not against us, but to show us what lives beneath the surface of our thinking. Now hear that. Have you ever been people and somebody just says something that just annoys the heck out of you? They didn't know. But that's a, one of your beliefs coming up to the surface of your subconscious, your garden of beliefs. Here I am. Heal me. Know the greater truth besides what is just popped up. It's not a weed. It's what we have believed from past experiences. What is this asking of me? I've talked about that before. When we ask the question, what is this asking of me? We can see that maybe what it's asking of you is you're not a victim. You're not limited. You're powerful. You are healthy. You are loved. Because you see what awakens needs to be healed, needs to be brought to the light of truth. 
events, news, someone, a noise or upsets you. They just poke that place within you that is asking to be healed. Yes? Now, this is where you would all say, yes. Mostly, this place that gets poked is our old fears that have held us in bondage, that keeps us from our true nature, that keeps us from our divine self. That's what we want to heal. Because the moment we open up to the healing, the moment we say, whoa, that really bothered me. Sometimes I say other things, but let's today say that really bothered me. Ah, when we can stop and say, it's awakening me to my divine self. It's our thinking that either frees us or imprisons us. Now, if we want to blame the other person for what's taking place, then that's going to hold us a little bit longer in that belief. Our subconscious, when unchallenged, will plague our thinking and give more life to our fears, more life to our doubts, more life to our worries. So when you're watching the news, which I'm going to invite you to set a timer, hmm, take good care of yourself, because right now, this is what you're doing. Yes, most of us are not working right now. So what is our job? To take really good care of ourselves, to nurture us, to feed us, to get in a class, to order one of these books, whatever it is. Take a walk. Watch silly movies. Watch YouTube funny cat videos. Today, let us each question our thinking. If it isn't loving, kind, and life-affirming, then it's not benefiting us at this time. Your job today, your job today is to take really good care of yourself. And I love the Bible story of the widow who was complaining she had nothing. She and her children were devastated. That's all she saw. And Jesus asked her, what do you have in your house? Three drops of oil, she replied. When he asked what's in your house, it means what, where is your focus? That all is against you? That you're limited? That you have less than? Or is there faith within your house, even if it's only three drops? Start there. Jesus told her to gather containers to pour the oil into these containers. And the widow was confused. She thought he was crazy. However, her faith did as she was told. And three drops kept pouring until she had more than enough oil for her family and to also sell. So suddenly, due to her faith, that small amount of faith returned to her everything that she needed and more. In your within you, is faith, is a great deal of faith. It's right where you are. We all have it. We cannot be in this life without faith. Now, it might be covered up. You might not think it's so. But I'm telling you, we're all born with faith. It's up to each one of us to cultivate that faith. To say, within me is a powerful presence of faith and trust, even if it's only three drops. And to pour our faith over our fears. To allow the fears to dissipate. This time in our history, more than ever, we're each being asked to strengthen our faith. Because let me tell you, without it, we're in trouble. So that's why we come together. Whether it's on uh, Facebook or whether it's on the phone. You see, email us. You can email us at fcs, fcsliving.org. Plug in, get into a class, and email at infofcsliving.org.
Email us and we will send you all the information you need. This is my plug for the day. There'll be another one at the end. See, we are living in the unknown. The seeds we plant today, what we pour into our life's experiences today will either lift us up or it will defeat us. How will you use every moment in your life? Let us each use this time wisely. Rick is vacuuming. Thank you, God. We're going to use this time wisely to deepen our faith and to cultivate our imagination. To see a greater outcome. This is what we're being called to do. Not only clean out the dusty corners, not only in our homes, but in our minds. And let's see a greater outcome. Let's seek the best. What is the best that you can see for this event in the world? See an amazing solution to ease the pandemic. See a solution being fine, found to heal the world. Corona becoming a non-issue. I am healthy. I am loved. I am blessed. I am a woman of faith. What are you saying to yourself? See, having grand expectations and a great Stimulus is the motivating power behind faith. We have to have grand expectations that our faith is going to respond to us as we, as we look at and claim and accept the greater truth in our lives. Behind all healings of all kinds, in the so-called impossible, how many times have we heard stories of people being healed and, and everybody saying that was impossible. Because you see, God works through our faith. And when we come into total unity and harmony with the God of our being, we are powerful beyond measure. This is what we're asking to do. So today we cannot allow the conditions or the environment to create separation and division in our lives. That defeats us. I'm not willing to do that, are you? Let us together see unity and oneness. First, it must begin within me. It must begin within you. And then it's easy to see it for everybody else. We will create unity. I know that. By holding the vision of what is possible for the good of all. Not just for the good of me or you, but for the good of of all people everywhere. It's up to each one of us to remove what is in our belief that stands between us and our God. What stops you from knowing that God is greater in your life than anything else, than your job, than your money, than your life experiences? God is greater. Let's commit to give equal time to spirit in our daily lives. We can't afford to allow ourselves to be victims. One of the other books that I love, by the way, I'm, I'm going to, on our website, put out books. I'm going to ask the practitioners, too, to what are their favorite books? And we're going to list books for you. We're going to list why we like them. This Thing Called You was my first book in Science of Mind. When I started reading it, this one day I was stuck and something was taking place with my car. And I was stuck, and the only book I had was this thing called You. Ugh, I was very disappointed. <laughs> anyway, I just kept reading it. There were times I threw this book, beloved book, across the room. And I realized the power of that book is instead of this thing called You, I always change the You to I. Ernest Holmes' writing is so beautiful and so powerful that when I claimed and accept that every word he wrote was in me, that I am the beloved place where God shows up. It changed. It made a difference. It was the first book that gave me the foundation of science of mind. So I invite you to get one too. I still use it today. Let us use this time to build our strong foundation of faith because this is what this time 
Here is asking of us. You don't want to say, I had two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I don't know how long this is going to take. Wow, I could have had, you know, what is it? I could have had something. I could have had my faith. I could have deepened my faith at this time. Let's be creators of our lives. Being a victim weakens our immune system. Now, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. We need a strong immune system. We need a strong faith. I am healthy. You are healthy. Let's find our faith strengthen in our inner body. Start from the inside out and build our natural immune system. When we feel safe, we heal our bodies. You know, when I have people doing, they go in for surgery or they're not well. I say, the power of God is healing me now. The power of God's healing me now. Because we want to call upon this divine presence. We have no idea how to do it ourselves. But we know God does. The power of God is healing me now. Repeat that. The power of God is healing me now. I'm going to invite you to make that your mantra this week. Our focus needs to be on a greater outcome, a greater future for today. And let's be the boss of our be the boss of your thinking. Only you can change your mind. Only you can change how you're thinking. I trust, I know, even if I don't see a way right now, the way will come. God has a way in my life and in your life. My faith in God delivers me from all fear. My faith in God, delivers me from all fear. Make that your mantra also. Please know with me that you are blessed and you are a blessing. Thank you for joining us today. Let's take that into prayer. Ah, and just breathe into that sacred and holy place that lives within you. And recognize there's only one life, one power, one all-loving, all-nurturing presence by whatever name. I call this God, the infinite, the divine, the beloved. It is right here, right now, right where I am, God is. And from this divine presence, this place of truth, this place of knowingness, I know that right where you are, you are filled to overflowing with the spirit of life that I call God, the infinite. The divine nature is so powerful within you. And with the sound of my voice, hearing that within you, it is growing magnificently and beautifully and fully. You are full of it. Full to overflowing. First, take this power for you. Let it touch every cell, muscle, fiber, and tissue. Strengthen and heal and love and light and the glory of pure spirit. And now, with the overflow, send it forth to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors on the other side of the world. May all people be blessed and healed. May all people know right where they are. There is an infinite wisdom, a spirit of life that is right in and through and as their perfect health, perfect harmony. Together we are strong, we are mighty, we are powerful because we are the place where God shows up. This and so much greater than what I can speak in words. I release my word into the ever living, loving law of God that always, always says yes. Returning to and through each and every one of us filled up and overflowing. All the good, all the grace, all the glory is right where we are. We accept it. We let it be so. And so it is. Amen. And now we're going to turn to Diana. And she's going to sing the song that I wrote the words for. So I'm so glad she likes it. And I'm glad she's singing it for us today. Enjoy.
Let's hear it for Diana. Woohoo! Okay, I want to hear. I want to hear from you how great she is. Diana, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, that's the song. best rendition of that song I've heard. Ah, thank you for all joining us today. This is usually, uh, oh, this is where we do our, uh, our gifts, isn't it? It's our, it's our abundance sharing. We really need your support. And I want to tell you that if, it, if it's $5, $10, if you could put it on PayPal, if you could mail it to us, go on our website, find out the address, we'd really appreciate it. This is, I don't want anybody to go over what they can afford. But if we all just do our part, I guarantee you that every, every dollar, every bit that you send in will be doubly returned to you. Because that's what we're knowing to be true. We are helping each other. We are helping out our brothers and sisters. So I would appreciate it. Mail it in. Put it on PayPal. Whatever you wish, we, would, we want to thank you for that. So God is my source, my substance, and my supply. I am blessed, and so it is. Amen. We know you are blessed, and these, these blessings, these, these gifts go out beyond these walls. They return to us, multiply, magnified, spilling over. Double return on everything that we give. Thank you, God. We let it be so, and so it is. Amen. Ah, there's some money just came in. Whoa, look at that from the crowd. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now as announcements. Um, the only thing I really know that's taking place is this Wednesday. This Wednesday, Reverend Suzanne's doing her monthly, first of the month meditation. Plus, Reverend Suzanne also on Wednesday is doing her uh, yoga by Zoom. Uh, her monthly meditation is going to be on Zoom. I will be there. I'm here at Reverend Suzanne's every monthly meditation. She does a beautiful job, and I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. So what I'm going to have Tony do tomorrow is send out an email with all the that's coming up, everything that's going to be there for you. So if you're not on our mailing list, then you definitely want to send Tony a, an email. Send it to info, I-N-F-O, at fcsliving.org. And send that email and say, put me on your list. Tell me what classes are coming out. Because in two weeks, I'm going to be teaching a class. It'll be on Tuesday evenings. I'll do it on Zoom. We're all in a learning curve, so isn't it fun? This is just a great, uh, a great time that is asking more of us, that is asking us to lift up beyond conditions and situations and to see the light of truth before we see it out there in life. We've got to see it within ourselves. So I know that's what's taking place in each and every one of us because the practitioners and the ministers of this community are dedicated and committed to you being served to you being embraced, to you knowing that right where you are, God is. So you need help. Get on our website. Reach out. We love to pray, and we'd be happy to pray with you anytime, all the time. So let's uh, close with all is well. And I just want to thank uh, Diana for being here. She, this is not the last time you're going to see her, let me tell you. Uh, she's a beautiful soul and a beautiful being. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so this is an easy one to follow along with at home, and it's a Karen Drucker song, so feel free to join in. So here we go. <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to stand over here so you can still see Diana. I thank you all for joining us today, for being present. We'll be here again next week. Um, here's your hug. I miss you. I love you. Uh, just let us know whatever you need. <sighs> we are doing great. Okay, take good care of yourself. I love you.